It's a win and in, and there you see on the right, Mr. Brad Nelson, standard specialist, playing the Naya control deck, and Chaz Hinkle, we just saw him under the camera, lose to Max Teets in a, a somewhat heartbreaking fashion, I suppose, with the mono blue devotion. Whoever wins this match is gonna join those other four names we've already mentioned. Now you said this is a Jerry Thompson's last sanctioned Magic tournament. I was actually wondering after he he wins the Invitational, there is enough time for him to go join a booster draft. Oh, that's a good point. And maybe he'll just uh, do an eight-man draft on his way out the door. <laughs> well, we'll have to see. It sounds like uh, the specific matchups. If you're following on Twitter, you should get involved in the conversation at SCG Live hashtag SCG Envy. If you were, you would see William Jensen, Brian Kibler, and Jerry Thompson talking about this event underway. This match underway, however. Brad Nelson is on the right. If you uh, uh, see on the right there, it, you can see that temple. And on the left is Chaz Hinkle. Chaz Hinkle playing Mono Blue Devotion. Brad Nelson playing Naya Midrange Control here. Is that is that an oxymoron, or can you call it mid-range control? That's not an oxymoron. Okay. The, uh, the names of the strategic ar archetypes, control, mid-range control, mid-range beatdown, beatdown, aggro control, and then there's the controversial question of whether there's hybrid control or not. Hybrid control, I've never heard of that one. It's pretty yeah. rare. Chaz Hinkle playing aggro here for sure, starting off with a uh, Cloudfin Raptor, then a Judge's Familiar evolving the Raptor, so two power in the air. And the judge is familiar, a somewhat disruptive element. Oh, look at that. He says, I don't want the judges familiar around. That's got to be a rare change to the rocks that gets rid of the judges familiar. Very interesting. Sure. I mean, it, it's very possible that Brad Nelson in his hand has something like anger of the gods. And if the judges familiar delays the anger by a turn, that could mean death. So using Chain to the Rocks early to take away a future disruptive element. Chaz loads the board up with a Frostburn Weird, which again evolves the Raptor to two power now, a 2-3. Brad Nelson maybe needs to find a Mizium mortar, Mortars to deal with the Frostburn Weird. Or he could also chain that to the Rocks. Yeah, we see he has another change to the rocks. He's currently scrying for the Temple of Triumph. Would you chain the Frostburn Weird to the rocks here? It really depends on uh, how much damage you think it's going to be doing to you. I mean, there's plenty of time, and there are very few answers to Master of Waves in Brad Nelson's main deck. So a second chain to the rocks, very good answer to a master. He needs to make sure he uh, doesn't get beaten up, though. There you see he does get rid of that Frostburn Weird. That Frostburn Weird can do four damage a turn all by itself. Yeah, very good point about Master of Waves. Protection from red, so it's protection from Anger of the Gods and from Mizium Mortars. So Chain to the Rocks, I think, may be the only main deck way for Brad to deal with a Master of Waves other than blocking with a creature. Yep, and he does have ways to block with creatures. Um, we see right now Jace reveals lands. It's a uh, Nykthos, Nykthos, and an island. Yeah, Brad has some uh, surprise creatures in his deck. He has two Selesnya um, charms, sorry, four Selesnya charms and two Advent of the Worms. I have that backwards, so it's two Advent of the Worms, four Selesnya charms. He can block a master, it's just hard. Loxodon Smiter, another card that could block it, but you obviously would not march a master into a Loxodon Smiter. Yeah, no surprise there. And also cannot block the Cloudfin Raptor because it has flying. So Chaz is going to continue to beat down unimpeded there. He got two Nykthos Shrine to Nyx off of the Jace minus two activation last turn. And he has three devotions, so not quite generating extra mana yet. Oh, and there you see a Tide Binder Mage. So he can play that bind the smiter and then can generate even more demotion then he can generate five total so oh and a cyclonic rift cyclonic rift That's an incredible card when you're able to use devotion to be able to power it out even more and we i, I have not seen this interaction yet in standard but cyclonic rift re returning both of the chain of the rocks at the end of the turn getting those creatures back that have been chained that is a big deal right here 
We see Chaz Henkel going through his uh, options right now. So is he going to minus two? No, plus one. Yep. And I think we're going to see uh, there's the tide binder that holds down the big elephant Bind and then leaves the mana open. Right now has one, two, three, four, five devotion. He can make five mana from the Nykthos and two lands. All right, Adrian. So Brad has to do something here. Uh, luckily, the Raptor is still a 2-3, so it's within Anger of the Gods range. And the Tidebinder is only a 2-2, two -two, so that has to be the play, yeah. And it sure is. is Anger of the Gods. The we see five mana created here. So Cyclonic Rift without overload, targeting the Chain to the Rocks... That was wow, and that lets the evolve trigger happen oh. from the Cloudfin Raptor. That that was pretty awesome. Now, obviously, the chain is still in hand, but it does mean, wow, with no white mana open, Brad Nelson not able to recast that chain right now. Awesome stuff. Yeah, that was an amazing play right there. What happened was Chaz Hinkle cast Cyclonic Rift on the Chain of the Rocks that was chaining the Frostburn Weird, so it returned to the battlefield, and it was a 1-4 pumping up the 2-3 Raptor out of Anger of the Gods range. And then Brad, not anticipating that, uh, I mean, who would, uh, tapping his mana incorrectly, was not able to recast the Chain of the Rocks. Woo, that he was a big play. The Jace goes down to one, and Chaz Henkel takes an Island and a Nightfell Spectre instead of a Thassa. That was an almost immediate split there for Brad. We're going to see the Nightfell Spectre. The Island comes down. One, two. Wow, not the Island. The Nykthos comes down. Okay, so tapping one Nykthos and then using the other, the new Legend Rule coming into play. This is why these decks can play perhaps more copies of Nykthos than you could previously under old rules that's that seemed like a strange way to go about playing that he could have just laid the island and gotten the same result mm. but you know, whatever the case may be he wanted to be fancy that was a, i think a cool plays moment there's a lot of waves too many for me to count enough to kill brad i'm sure to the point where he needs to have another anger of the gods uh, because Mizzy and Mortars is not going to cut it. He only has five mana right now. Even if he plays a six, that Judge is familiar will just force spike it. He does have a chain to the rocks. He can chain the Master of Waves away, and that chained Master will lose all of the elementals. But uh, mm -hmm. he still has too many other threats on the table. Those other ones will get him. Yeah, I mean, there was a 3-4 Cloudfin Raptor, a Frostburn Weird that can pump up. Uh, even the Night Veil Spectre certainly is a threat at that point. 2-3 Flyer. And we go to our sideboards. Brad Nelson um, has uh, access to quite a few cards on the sideboard. One of the most important ones, I have to say, is Last Breath, a card where Brad does not try to race his opponent to death. He's not going for a very fast kill. He just wants to kill the important cards. Mm -hmm. The important cards, Master of Waves is absolutely one of them. And Last Breath giving his opponent four life, not that big of a deal. And we saw earlier when Brad Nelson played against Kenta Hiroki, he was also on the Mono Blue Devotion deck. Brad brought in the Miscutter Hydras which gave him something to really put the game away quickly after he had gained control. That is a potential problem for his deck. He takes a lot of damage early on, and then he doesn't want to get kind of picked apart just before he wins. So the Miscutter Hydra, the hasted pro-blue protection, it's a uh, lot can't of, be countered. A lot of Miscutters, four of them. Now, what kind of answers does uh, Chaz Henkel have to a Miscutter Hydra? Ratchet Bomb. This was a card that a lot of people were using at uh, the Pro Tour in Dublin as a potential answer to Miscutter Hydra. It does not matter how big the Hydra is, its converted casting cost is still considered one. Yeah. At least very when important. it's in play. When it's in play, it is considered one. Yeah, when it's in a spell, it's whatever the X is. So if you need to spell blast it, you're going to need to use a lot of mana. 
other cards that are potentially possible to solve the problem of Miscutter Hydra? Well, in a pinch against a small Miscutter Hydra, you could rapid hybridization one of your own creatures. Is the is the token that's created, is it green? It's green. So green that would be able wizard. to block, um, presuming you have a small enough Hydra to stop. That's a big presumption. That is a big presumption. Now, uh, Cyclonic Rift at the... Uh, Largest level seven mana, the one way upheaval, another way to handle Miscutter Hydra, but it's only a delaying tactic. So, Brad's four Miscutter Hydras, that's a really big deal in this matchup. We knew the last time we saw this matchup, it totally made the difference. Yeah, I think Brad in that matchup against Kenta casting a, a 5 5 and a 6 6 Miscutter Hydras to take two game, game two and game three individually. So he'll be looking to do the same thing, just buy some time in the early turns, using those removal spells, and hopefully maybe he wants to use surprise blockers like Selesnya Charm, making a 2-2 two -two Knight, and Advent of the Worm, making a 5-5 five -five Worm to block things, especially a Master of the Waves if he can catch Chaz attacking with one into his mana. Now Chaz Hinkel here um, playing very, very... Um, close to the lists we saw in Dublin. One of the changes we've seen a lot of players make since the Dublin lists, very nearly all of the lists in Dublin ran for Judges Familiar. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I've been seeing since Dublin is people cutting one or even two Judges Familiar from the list. And Omen Speaker was also very common in the Dublin lists. Sam Black ran one Omen Speaker. Some players ran two or even three. Um, I didn't see any lists at the top in Dublin that ran four, but it's possible that that was the case for some of those players. But we're seeing these days very rarely Omen Speaker and Judges Familiar often at three. And that's the case for Chaz. Okay, game number two, Brad Nelson lost game one, so he starts off on the play with a Temple of Triumph and then a Temple of Abandon. Now he puts the card on the bottom of his library from the scry right there. Chaz Hinkle started off with a turn one Cloudfin Raptor, but is not able to evolve it on turn two. Another and Temple. The Cloudfin as a zero one is a very disheartening feeling. You, uh, you don't want to have evolve be such a liability but I know that if you've drafted the format with Evolve decks one of the things that sometimes happen is you can get Evolve screwed so to speak which is to say just not being able to trigger it when you want to be able to trigger it. Triggers it now off the Night Veil Spectre. Brad kept the card on top from the Temple of Abandon. He likes that so Chaz attacks for one finally and Anger of the Gods is that the card he kept on top with the, the Scry? Possible. Magic Dealing with both of those flyers exiling them. Chaz follows up with a master of the wave. It is uh, a wave master. I believe I see a Celestia charm in Brad's hand. Mm. I wonder if he's just going to use that to ambush um, Chaz Hinkle. Yeah, the question is, does Chaz know that Brad is running that card? Oh, doesn't matter. Oh, chain to the rocks. So we see Brad with Xenagos the Reveler going to make a 2-2 Seder token with haste and attack with that after chaining the Master. Now I've said this before, I still think they messed up the art on Xenagos. He should be giving the Metal Horns. If you look at Xenagos, an amazing new Planeswalker, really, really cool art and uh, has a lot of awesome abilities. It can make mana, it can make creatures. It quite has a whole big party thing going on, but you know what it doesn't have? It doesn't have the Metal Horns going on. It's just holding his hand up. It looks like it, though, but it's just upraised hands. Rock and roll hoochie coo here. Two Seder tokens now with haste. Brad playing some more lands, some stomping grounds here after his scry lands. And he really, he doesn't even need a miss cutter hydra at this point. Chaz looks like he's flooded. He plays a sixth island, and we saw at least one more in his hand. That's too many lands, and Brad will just continue to make satyrs. Last breath in Brad Nelson's hand. Chaz mm, Hinkle scoops wow. it up. That was about a 30-second long uh, match, it felt like, or game, it felt like. But, you know, it was a little longer than that. But pretty much what we saw there that game, um, Evolved didn't do anything. Anger of the Gods cleared the table. Then a master came down from Chaz Hinkle, and Brad Nelson just dispatched with the master immediately and laid a Xenagos. And then Chaz stuck, no th nothing to do while Xenagos' satyrs came in rumbling. Attack, 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 game. They were reveling. 
so Chaz Hinkle, that that turn, I'm sorry, that game. Did he keep? Uh, so if he kept Cloudfin Raptor, uh, Night Vale Spectre, and Master of the Waves, and four islands, that's a decent hand, right? I mean, it's a, a hand that's asking for some help from the top of the library. Mm -hmm. um, Master of Waves, Chaz Hinkle knows is a difficult card to answer, but he's already seen change to the rock. So what I have to imagine that Chaz Hinkle is hoping for is he's hoping that uh, the top of his library will show him something like a Thassa, you know, a Dissolve. Um, if he knows that Brad Nelson is running Mistcutter Hydras, a Ratchet Bomb even just to have a little bit of protection but none of those cards showed up, and instead Chaz Hinkle falls to a Xenagos that he cannot answer. Yep. Max Khan on Twitter saying that the anger of the gods that I said that Brad scried into is incorrect. He scried into the Xenagos on the battlefield. I wasn't quite able to see it. Maybe Max Khan has got a high-definition television at home, and he's watching SCG Live on that. One of the things I actually heard a small rumor about is apparently Evan Irwin is working on 3D technology so that we'll be able to broadcast this on 3D. I know I've seen plenty of people at home crane their necks trying to see around. Is that card in somebody's hand? But they can't do it. Don't worry, Evan Irwin, he's going to work on that 3D broadcasting. We'll get that to you probably in the next 10 years. Okay. I, at first, I wasn't sure if you were being serious or not, Adrian. <laughs> so thank you for uh, letting me know at the end because I was just, uh, really? Like, how is that going to work? Well, it's pretty expensive technology. Yeah. He's, he's friends with uh, Guillermo del Toro. Guillermo G del Guillermo Toro. <laughs> yeah, Guillermo del Toro, you're correct. The director of Pacific <laughs> Rim. <laughs> Brad Nelson, a big fan of Pacific Rim. He actually Dude. named his his new kitty cat Kaiju, I believe, <laughs> after that movie. Uh, Brad Nelson is here on the right. He is the 2010 Player of the Year on the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour. And uh, no slouch to the game. He not only is a part of the Star City Games stable here of people that we expect to see do well at these open series and at the Invitation but he just came off of a Grand Prix Louisville Top 8 himself, along with Todd Anderson and the champion of that event, Brian Braun DeWin. Brian Braun DeWin, who has drawn himself in to Top 8. It has been um, verified. Brian Braun DeWin, Jerry Thompson. Um, let's see who else we have in the Top 8. So far, we also have William Jensen. And it is not yet confirmed, but it sounds like Michael Burnett might also be in the Top 8. Sacred Foundry, the first play for Brad Nelson, facing off against a Cloudfin Raptor. We'll see if Chaz can evolve it on schedule this game. No, okay. He's okay. No, I was going to say, maybe he's going to try to evolve two Raptors, but not this turn. So a second Cloudfin Raptor. I thought he was going to follow up with the Judge's Familiar there, but Nykthos, he cannot tap that for blue mana quite yet. We see a uh, Mountain and a Mizium Mortars. Mm. Brad just not wanting to deal with the possibility of a lot of damage coming out. Nykthos into Nykthos, three mana. Is it going to be Thassa? Thassa it is. And a 0-1 wow. Cloudfin Raptor once again sitting back. One, two, three. Loxodon Smiter from Brad Nelson. Well, Chaz did mulligan to six this game. So not the ideal keep, and Brad Nelson also possibly not the ideal keep, needing to Mizium Mortars, a Cloudfin Raptor, pretty much a dead giveaway that he doesn't have an anger of the gods, I would think. Now Chaz Hinkle's list has three Nykthos in it, zero Mutavolts. Well, that's a little bit surprising, zero Mutavolts. Passes the turn back to Brad Nelson, and uh, he does have 22 blue sources, so he should have more than enough blue sources to have Night Vale Spectre and the like be able to sufficiently be um, doing the work they need to. Mm. Oh, look at that. Miss Cutter Hydra at three. Attack for seven. Oh. And we see a Pongify. Wow. Oh, no, that is rapid hybridization. The newfangled you Pongify becomes a frog lizard, blocks the Mist Cutter Hydra. You mentioned this interaction, and it just happened. Adrian Sullivan, are you, in fact, from the future here to commentate now? Are you the Terminator? <laughs> no, come with me if you want to live. Okay, I will. I believe you now because I did not think this interaction would happen. I thought the Mist Cutters would be too big for rapid hybridization, but we saw it there. The Frog Lizard blocks, but Brad Nelson has another 3-3 Mist Cutter Hydra. Chaz does not even have a creature to turn into a Frog Lizard at that point. It looks like he has, wow, a Frostburn Weird, another Nykthos. That's his third Nykthos. 
Vasa in play, but very uh, unexciting right now. And is that another rapid hybridization in his hand? Uh, possibly, but unfortunately, oh, it doesn't to, oh. matter. He yeah. is just being just. Uh, and that wrote. is it. Selesnya Charm as a plus two, plus two trample to finish it off. Chaz Hinkle falls to Brad Nelson's Naya mid range control deck. Look at the smile.